See how that just changes the whole vibration. Welcome guys to Simon on the Sofa. Today I'm very uh, pleased and excited to be having a conversation with um, somebody that's recently come into to my life. This is uh, John and um, hey John. Hello, Hello. <laughs> lovely to be here. It's a pleasure. Yeah, like, oh, privilege. Like, likewise, likewise. Privilege. John, uh, John sent a message. This is a spontaneous one because we plan to have a conversation at some point and synchronistically flown and, mm. and to this point now. So uh, um, yeah, what did we say? We were gonna, I think I, I said that, you know, where I'm at at the moment is really just talking about this, this idea of transparent communication. Mm. Transparency and, and yeah, truth. Yeah, transparency and truth, yeah. So um, I'll just let you, and whatever comes up yeah. for you from that place, you know? So yeah, so basically, we've been talking about this before I went abroad. I've just been to South Africa, um, helping out with my mum, who is elderly with dementia and um, needing a lot of care. So I've just been over there, basically moving her into a new place, which all came unexpectedly. That wasn't the intention of the trip but it flowed beautifully. And while I was there, it was this light bulb that just said, here I am working with such transparency on so many levels, and you came up. And it was just like, actually, this needs to be shared because basically the story is that um, where mum was, it was a beautiful place, but she had a heart attack in December and she was moved into frail care in the development where she was. But the frail care was so disrespectful of our elders in terms of the love. Nursing was fine, but there was no love. Mm. And one of the things that is so crucial in our world is the respect and the love and the care for our elders. Something that in the West, especially I think we've lost. And so as synchronicity would have it, I had dinner with a friend and his wife had that day only been to this amazing new care home for Alzheimer's and dementia patients and said, I must go and see it. So I did. I walked through this awesome, awesome space run by a young 34 year old where everything about it exuded love from the way in which the place has been decorated to the care that they give the individuals in terms of the thought that they have, right down, you're gonna love this, to a lava lamp room. The lava lamp room, A nice. lava lamp room is where there's one rocking chair where the occupational therapist will sit an individual down in a particular stage of paranoia or stress or whatever comes with Alzheimer's and actually let, assist them to get back into their centered calmness watching these lava lamps, these gorgeous array of lava lamps and a disco ball above, which is just too classic. <laughs> and I have these visions of my mum sort of boogieing to ABBA. <laughs> and, um, to when, the lava lamp, when, calling you out. John exactly, darling, John exactly, darling, where are you? Exactly. When all my youth she'd say, what's that god awful noise you're playing? Because she was a concert pianist, so she was in, into classical music. So I walked through this place and I thought, no way are we going to be able to afford this. This place screams money, it screams love, but it screams money. And so I thought I'm going to actually just be transparent here. I'm going to do the first business negotiation in a state of total transparency. I've never used it. I use it in terms of the way I live my life, but I've never actually been in a situation where I've needed to go and do a business transaction on that basis. Yeah, because it's, it's different, isn't it's it? Different we have energy. sort of levers, it's, it's and, different and energy. Also, and yeah. you also sort of go in with an expectation and you know, this person's there and you're here and you know. Yeah. And you want something and they yeah, want something from exactly. you and it's, it's almost like a, a, a dance, but sometimes a competition, isn't there? Exactly. To communicate. And I think you're often communicating on a level where you're not being transparent because you're trying to achieve something by actually lying or putting yourself in a different position or whatever, you know, people negotiate in all sorts of ways. But transparency in business, this worked. I basically met with my mum's financial advisor. I 
got a printout of what she had left, and I went down and I sat there with this guy and I said, just let me sell my mum to you. We can't afford this place, but this is what she has left. This is going to last two years in the place she's in at the moment, and she may well make another two years. But what my mum will bring to you is love, joy, gratitude every single day because there isn't a miserable bone in her body. She is going to bring her music. We're going to bring her grand piano into your space, and we're going to let her play and bring sound and music therapy to these people in this place. My mother also sees no color, which in a place like South Africa is a wonderful thing because the elderly sadly often still do. She sees absolutely no color. She just celebrates humanity with love, and it is the most beautiful thing to experience. So I said, I am putting in front of you my mum as an asset to your new development. I want you to come back to me and tell me whether or not you're prepared to come with an offer that we can afford. But see her as an asset. I went away. Two days later, I got an email. And I'm not allowed to say what they reduced it by because it's confidential. Yeah. But they dropped hugely. They thanked me for the transparency of communication. Mm. They said they'd never done a business transaction in that way before. They never bought somebody's mum. They'd never bought somebody's <laughs> mum. <laughs> no, I I'm sold joking. my mum. You sold your mum. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> so, come on, you're going to buy her. She's you're got value. She's, she's got value. Got exactly. <laughs> no, I but actually sold yeah, my mum. That was, that was the first time, like, yeah. That people, rather than just living on a pretense, working with a, the wrong energy in that process, you could actually go into that space and be honest and be totally transparent, totally truthful, and come at it from that space. So I did. Within a matter of weeks, I was able to bring mum from her other place, pack up her flat, all her belongings, close her last home, work with interior designer, get this whole place set up. We all worked in one unit because everybody just put themselves forward in love. It was the most amazing, amazing, amazing experience to see that love for our elders. Yeah. Yes, it's my mum, so I speak with it from a particular point of connection. Yeah, and you instigated it and you went out there, but, but you but see what happened from the energetic energy that you put into that. that. You put in, that yeah. you, and that you saw from everyone around her, everyone around her. And to me, it's, it, this is a lesson in truth. We can use it on every walk of life, mm. every level of life. I mean, I love what you're doing in bringing this consciousness to the fore, letting people really focus on it. Because naturally, I do try to come at life from that perspective, but I've never thought of it like that. Yeah. What you do is make people aware of that. Mm. And it brings it to the consciousness, and therefore it brings it to flow. And you speak it. I use those words. I talk to them. I say, we're going to do this in, on, on a transparent basis. Yeah. We're going to do this in truth. Yeah. And was they familiar with that term? In, 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 they in were. Yeah. They were. They just weren't used to using it in yeah. that sort of business context. Yeah. But what it brought it back to was humanity at its purest, most beautiful, resonant form. Yeah. Sustainable. Where everything was being done for joy. Yeah. And that's what life is. There's so much bull. Yeah. Shit yeah. Out there. <laughs> yeah, you can swear. You won't. It's not a swear, is it? You're yeah. allowed to say that. There's, there's so much bullshit out there. And to actually break that and bring it back to a point of truth. Yeah, and the layers, and the layers fall away, see? This is what we, me and uh, Rashid were talking earlier, is that you know, what happens when we really embody this mm. form of communication is that so many layers fall away. And the thing is, is that what's scary at that point as well, though, is that those layers, so many people mm. have claimed as their identity. Mm -hmm. So, so, so that's when that's when yeah. it gets really hard. So when people start going, yeah. well, I can't say, yeah. I can't really say that to somebody in business, or I can't, I can't go and do that in my relationship, or you know, I can't say that to my boss, or but it, you can yeah. because it actually happened. You know, it happened recently with another uh, friend of mine. And again, she wants to shift, mm. you know, she mm. wants to change. Mm. She's reliant on the job for money, mm. for, you know, uh, uh, stability. But then she had to communicate to her boss. Mm. And what happened? Again, her boss supported her. 
obviously it changed the dynamics because now she realizes that this person doesn't want to be in the in in the working environment so obviously she's now looking at okay i'm going to potentially at some point lose or not lose but you know we're going to move her out of that role mm -hmm. but what was really wonderful is that her fear of telling her boss because she thinks she might lose her job mm -hmm. actually gave her the support yeah. to to go on and do what she wants to do yeah. with her boss's blessing exactly do you see the difference just by community rather than going oh mm -hmm. i'm not enjoying my job exactly. i really want to leave yeah. and, and so yeah. on it's all well, you know it's like the onion and it's all these layers of skin that you can just shed and you can shed and you can shed and what comes from it when you do go with that you stand in your power. Standing in your power in a very positive way. I mean, we we'll often look at standing in power and think that's a negative thing. It's not at all. It, it's standing in your truth. And when you stand in your truth, the person you're dealing with, if they are a human being, will respect you for it. Yeah. And often that's what people need to do because there's so much fear in business, so much fear in hierarchy, yeah. so much sense of he's there, I'm there, whatever. It's rubbish. This very place that my mum has been moved into, one of the things that this guy said to me, this young, amazing, amazing soul, he said, in this business, I have no hierarchy. Everyone is equal. Hmm. I don't want anybody to look at me and think I am the boss because everyone in here is delivering a job that only they can really deliver in yeah. their truth. Yeah, wonderful. And that's an amazing thing. Yeah. So that everyone has that same respect. Yeah. And with that, they all expand. They all grow. Yeah, they all grow. They all move into their own yeah. joy because yeah. they're actually doing, yeah. and they know their, their value because everybody wants to be a value exactly. of some kind. Exactly. And what's lovely as well, we call it, I know in the esoteric yeah. spiritual field, it's yeah. like moving from guru to group. Yeah. Yeah. But regardless, take spiritualism out of the equation, but just in life, if we just move away from that idea, you know, that idealism of like guru or hierarchy or boss mm. or, mm. you know, you're better than me mm. and, and, and let that go, that almost I call it out of aligned ego, mm. let that ego go. Yeah. And then you actually, the, the irony is when you, get, when you enter that space, you actually achieve more anyway, you do. You do. don't you? You it's achieve true. more than trying to control. I mean, I, I say to people often, look at, your, look at yourself as the guru within. Because within us, we have so much knowing. We have instinct. We know what is right. And if you can go to that instinct, if you can build on that instinct, let that be your own guru. Work with yourself. We can, we all have the ability to heal ourselves, to grow, to expand. We have to develop the confidence in which to do it. Yeah. Instead of living in fear. Yeah. You, you go to that actual, that flower. I, I was on a course recently and I was, um, saying that you know, there was an analogy that I used that, I, that in the last year where I've been doing my own bit of journey, I, I sort of felt that I'd started that year as a water lily flower, but down in the mud. But I was happy in that mud because I was safe in that mud. But over the last year, I've just literally felt this water lily, that beautiful bud just coming up through the murky waters and seeing that light, seeing that light, seeing that light and coming out and, and opening. And that's all from within. Yeah. That's yeah. actually connecting through yeah. once you go to that truth once you go to that space of belief within yourself that you can find your own peace in your own stillness you expand yeah lovely and it's through that stillness yeah that you find your expansion and through that that you connect yeah because which then, which then brings the, yeah which then brings the confidence doesn't it because you've had a transformation a huge transformation in last year which today is funnily enough we said didn't we a synchronistically year. unfolding yeah. but today is a year anniversary since, anniversary since you actually went on what on my vision quest a vision quest yeah. so um but which basically is almost a, a, an inward shamanic yeah. journey of, shamanic of, of, journey. of many respects, yeah. isn't it? You know, it's, it's called a shamanic journey, isn't it's it? It's a shamanic journey and it's in the wild and it's basically, you, you go off alone for a duration of, it's usually four nights, four, four and a half days, where you go alone into the wilderness and you are trained in what, how you work with that time and how you use it for yourself energetically. Um, and you do on the last night and all night vigil where you actually step in at sunset and you, into, you build a circle, a power circle, you step in at sunset from the west, you, you do all your processing and your work throughout the night and you call for your vision and then you step into the sunrise, into the east. And by, in that process, it's, it's, a, it's an idea that by stepping into the circle from the west, you're saying goodbye to your old life. You're actually allowing your old life to die. And then you're doing the process work that you have set as, the, as a goal yeah. for that time over that night within that space and that you enter a new life by walking into the sunset. So it's a very, it, it's a very tangible thing. You know, yeah. you can really feel this sort of move that you are making in that simple process. Yeah. 
But there's a lot of intention in that as well, though, Huge right? intention. A lot of intention. Individual, Huge. everyone coming together. But just share Huge. the little bit. There's a wonderful story about the water. About, the, you know, when you've when you got to take, you have to take... Is that, that's the one you went, when you went, you have to take the right amount of water, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. Where you take, the 20, where you take your, t- your 20 litres of water. 20 litres of water. Yeah. And, and then how far it. do you have, you just find wherever you want to go? You stand on a little, that, on this one, because you're in a valley with, with mountains around you. They take you to this little hillock in the middle and they, you just stand there and they say, right, just, just turn. Just look around you and your soul will call you. And you go. Y- you don't know why. You, just, you are drawn in a specific direction into those mountains. And I found the most awesome cave. It was an old, uh, an ancient sand cave, the, the Bushmen as they used to be known, but the sand people of South Africa, with their paintings, their rock paintings on the wall. It was absolutely awesome. And I sort of, I found this space and it just had such an ancient piece about it. Um, such a, a view that was like, I mean, that view was my healer. Yeah, humbling. Humbling, yeah. absolutely humbling. And you sit there for those days, you have no contact with anybody. And you go to silence and you fast. So you've got your 20 litres of water and you just fast. Yeah, you've got nothing but your 20 litres of water. 20 right? litres of water. No clothes. And you take minimal clothes. But minimal clothes. Yeah. It's up to you. Yeah. I like to strip off, so that's fine. So I mean, you're just like <laughs> you're just in naked, the cave, naked, naked under, under the sun. Under the sun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then Until it gets cold at night, yeah, yeah. and then on come the layers. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but, but but I mean, we're talking about this is a this is a process in in really which is many ways of doing this, but yeah. for people listening, this is, who may not have heard of like even a shamanic journey before, etc. This is a process really of, of, of letting go, accepting, and moving beyond the, the, the limitations that we've built up through our, um, not, well, more often than not, through not even our beliefs, right? Yeah. But through, through society's society. beliefs and so on. Through what's been built, what has evolved. I, I say to people that actually you come into this world I believe in past life energy, so, you know, we're just old souls floating about this place. You come into this world and you are your most authentic till about aged five. Because by then you're beginning to be molded by your parental upbringing, your society in which you've been born, the politics of the country, the religions, whatever. That molds you who you become. Yeah. But up to about age five, you are you. Yeah. You are your truth. Because sitting in you is an ancient knowledge, what I call the cellular knowing, the deep, deep cellular knowing of all your past life energies that are are embodied within your consciousness. As an adult, if you can look back to that part of life and if you can remember something that inspired you, what just got you going as a really young kid? What did you love to do? And then ask the question, do I embody any of that in my adult life? Yeah, you mean in that period from when you was from, like one to five? Yeah, if you can remember, yeah. if you can go back to that stage and remember what really rocked your boat. I'm buggered, I can never remember past when I'm about seven. <laughs> You're buggered then. <laughs> so I'm going to work on it, I'm going to work on it. You're going to have to go to a bit of regression therapy. <laughs> but yeah, if you can go to that space, you often find that you were naturally drawn to do a certain thing. Yeah. And for me, I know, I was naturally drawn to nature. I was in gardens, you couldn't stop me. I mean, I was out from knee high to a grasshopper. I was busy gardening. But I was also very involved with the elderly. I I was drawn to the elderly. I found, I loved their wisdom. I loved their whole sense of being in this world. And um, I found I'd left all of that behind. And through the vision quest, I've actually journeyed back into that consciousness. And it's it's, it's like this pilot lamp of a gas boiler that's been just sitting there in the background the whole time. Mm. And then I just put on yeah. the power and vroomps. And it's enabled me to connect with people who have similar consciousness, who have got the same sort of values, yeah. whatever you want to yeah. call it. Yeah, but it's funny you say that because we, we're always attracting what we are, right? Yes. So, 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 so the front, the, 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 if anything, what happens is, or what may have happened to you as well, again, for people listening, is, is your awareness shifts. Mm. So because your awareness is shifted, mm. you're still attracting what you are, but now in a much more present state. Mm. Do you see what I mean? And, and, and it's wonderful what you say there about the, the, the age five, because mm. if we just think about that, that age, um, regardless of even past lives and so on, but just that, mm. just you that, know, just that, that chunk of life, yeah. when, you know, again, we touched on this earlier, when yeah. actually you're not, you're not any label, you're not any form of conditioning at that point, you're not a, you're not a projection of any kind. Yeah. And, and most people are, in, in, you could say, embodying the full expression of creation as they are. Mm. And then what happens, we start getting a bit weighed down, a bit heavy, you know, Molded. destructive Molded. thoughts and so on. Yeah. So actually what we're saying, actually, can you really 
Can we really step into the full expression of who we are as a creative surge of energy? Do you know what I mean? As, a, as part tap of the whole. Into that energy. Yeah, tap into mm. that, exactly. Mm. And just, just even, even just by, it doesn't even mean to say you've got to jump up and down and, you know, and go wild, but even just to be aware of that energy. Exactly. You know? Because that energy is your truth. Yeah. And when you find that energy, you vibrate on a different level. Yeah. And that's the thing. So many of us, you know, we're living through lives where we just, we're existing. Yeah. We're living a life that might rock our boat in certain ways, but often it's not our true vibration. No, it's limited. It's very limited. And it's, it's trying to find that consciousness that's with, within each of us. Yeah. And everyone's got their own path on how they might choose to go there. Some people never choose to go on that path. Yeah. But, and there's, there's a million ways in which you can do it. But for me, the vision quest was awesome. And I would recommend it to a lot of people because it's, it is, you know, if, if you're comfortable with nature, it is the place to commune with nature. Well, you are nature. You are nature. Yeah, if you're not comfortable one. with nature, then get in the garden. But the amazing thing was, sitting there in that cave, once you've, once you've been there for a couple of days and, you know, you, and you've been fasting and the whole lot, you're really, really hungry, but you've gone into an incredible stillness, the animals come to you. Mm. That blew me away. Yeah. Wild birds that would land on a rock right next to me and tweet away quite happily while I'm just sitting there in total stillness. Yeah because you're not a threat, yeah. because they just sense you are all one. Yeah, you can sense that you're in that peace you're at that moment. In that yeah, peace. you're just there, totally. And for me, I, mean, I still get goosebumps thinking about it. It was one of the most humbling things mm. to realize how we, as man, need to understand how to get back to that stillness where we are no threat. <sighs> nice, nice. Because we live our lives in a way of threat. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's wonderful, it's, yeah, it's wonderful because we have like a, that for me, I think that's, we, we're about to end, mm. right? Because time has flown by, but that's a wonderful place yeah. To, yeah. to end. But just, just to encapsulate it, because we started like transparency. So in terms of, of, I mean, that's it, isn't it? Coming back to that space, mm. coming back to that silence, mm. coming back to that connection to all that is, transparency allows you to move yeah. through the conditioning yeah. back. Yeah. Would you say that? Let's yeah. summarize it, you know, how you, how you feel at the moment. And you know, we're in 2012, even, we're in evolution, yeah. so much is uh, uh, so unfolding. Much is yeah. There, there's just, uh, you know, and even for the likes of you and me, yeah. who can do this, we can talk a lot. Yeah. It's that silence yeah. where you receive. Yeah. And at this time where there is such an obvious transition in energetic frequency, we can only really source into that through our silence. That's what we have to get back to. We've got to just allow ourselves time every day to be still. And then you go there. And it, and it just, mm. and life evolves. And I'm gonna end on one short bit of a poem. Because what, what are you doing with your love letters? Can I end on a bit of a poem? And a heart from a the river that I grew up on in Africa oh, for you. Wonderful. Because you're the man of love. The man of love. So I have you, a heart, I have a heart got, stone. You've got a heart stone from the Lo that. Lawrenceford River Come in on. South Africa. Where from? The Lawrenceford River. Thank you. That, that's it's for me. The, Thank you so water, much. You bought a gift for me. That, that fed our farm that I grew up on. You're so wonderful. So Thank I found you. that under the waters. But because of your love letter thing that you're doing, I found this is the end of a long poem and I just thought it was really beautiful. It, the, I'm just reading the last part. Please. The fifth rose, a rose that has no color, a rose that is undying, a rose that you can see through and that there is nothing to hide, a rose so pure and true that all that lies in it is you, so perfectly, so preciously, a girl that is so pure of heart like an angel. This rose is a transparent rose. With this rose, I show you all that I am. With this rose, I show you I have nothing to hide. Here you can see your reflection that lies in my heart. I love so deeply living in me. I love you with all my heart. And there is no way that this rose will die. Your love is the water that keeps it alive. A poem by Carlos Weaver. Mm. And to me, it says it all. It says it all. Transparency in a rose with love. Yeah. You've just brought the stillness to me. I don't even need to add anything to that. 
all I can say is thank you so much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. It's been a joy. You are an amazing guy. You bring your love. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. And the poem for you. Simon on the sofa. Thank you very much. Adios. Thank you. Stay silent. Thank you.